God sent Jonah to Nineveh. Nineveh was a great city. It wasn't a village. It wasn't a market. It was a great city that had great people who were living in greatness. They were wealthy. They were rich. But because of sin, God was about to destroy them. They were about to perish because of their sin. The use of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. God doesn't want any one of us to perish because of the love of money, which is the root of all evil. But God wants each any one of us to enjoy life and have it in Abaddon. For God so loved the world that He gave His only and only begotten Son, so that whosoever shall believe in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ is the Word because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Each and every one of us, we need Jesus Christ inside our life because He is the Word. Our Lord Jesus Christ saw the turn His disciples, and everyone else was listening to Him. You are clean because of the Word which has spoken to you. The Word of God is what makes to, is, is what tends to wash us. How can a young man keep his ways pure? By hiding the Word of the Lord inside his heart. And so to each and every one of us, we daily need the Word of the Lord. Hebrews 3.13, it says, Hebrews 3.13, which is our theme verse, it says that, let us encourage each other as long as it is today, so that none of our so that none of our hearts is going to be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. And so the way out of sin is by hearing the Word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out from the mouth of the Lord. Welcome. The greatest love that anyone could ever know It overcame the cross and grave to find my soul Until I see you face to face Grace amazing takes me home I trust in you With all I am my lead to see your kingdom come And in my heart I pray you let your will be done until I see you face to face, grace amazing takes me home. I trust in you, and I will live to love you. I will live to bring you praise. I will live like a child in all of you. You are the voice that called the universe to be. You are the whisper in my heart that speaks to me And until I see you face to face Grace amazing takes me home I trust in you And I will live to love you I will live to praise you I will live a child in all of you and I will live to love you I will live to bring you praise I will live a child in all of you Oh Lord Cause you are alone I go Praise God, shalom God, shalom, shalom, my name is Charlie G, this lesson today. Thank you very much for tuning in for this lesson today. I know and I do believe that we are going to be blessed by the word of God. The word of God is alive and active, sharper than a double edged sword, soul piercing into our innermost spring, bringing division between soul and spirit, between born and marrow. And so to each and every one of us, let us only live a life of knowing that it's through, word, it's through the word of God that we get to be quickened. And that's the song, Till I See You Face to Face by Hillsong United. It's a song that I got to hear of it when I was way back in high school. And I remember as I was serving, uh, as I was ministering together with Christ Code Ministry in Kitengela PCA Township, in that we used to learn new songs. We to uh, Carol used to bring to us, uh, used to print the lyrics for us, and so we got to learn the songs, got to minister uh, uh, the songs from our heart that I haven't had that song in a really long time and the still the tune is mean still i can flow with it uh it's about time that i get to learn it in heart and get to minister uh, to, uh minister with it to uh, to god's people minister uh, with it to god and allow god to minister to his people uh, that i learned from god will be better in the god will be better said that we minister to god and we allow god to minister to his people and so instead of you ministering uh, wondering how are people how are people gonna react how what's gonna how are people gonna respond and that don't focus on the people don't focus focus on the congregation but only we found focusing to God minister to him uh, Paul Rice said that God whom I serve with my conscience God whom I serve with my conscience and there is a portion of scripture that I should uh, I should uh, point out to us God who I serve with my conscience and that calls us to serve God with everything that we have and everything and all that we are 
I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am, I am, I am. And so tell me this the book of 1 Timothy chapter 3, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 3. And it says, I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did with a clear conscience. With a clear conscience. Uh, I bet I'm going to ponder on it. A clear conscience. Uh, because when our conscience does not condemn us, neither that God, uh, when our conscience does not condemn us, neither that does God condemn us, uh, neither that, that neither neither does God condemn us. I'm gonna show you the portion of scripture. And so uh, once again, I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did. And I bet uh, when I was talking, when I was sharing about the ministration of the of the uh, of the women, women in, in ministry, in that is it was my encouragement to each and every one of us. Don't ever be ashamed that your father is a minister, your mother is a minister, and then you, as their kid, you're a minister, and then your kid, your, your kid will become a minister. And that don't ever feel anything bad about it. It's something of it's a, it's a noble duty. Serving the Lord is surely a noble duty that we surely get to partake of it. And it's uh, we, are, we are serving our master. Uh, also, the, also the portion of scripture I bet I'm gonna point it out to you in that I'm doing a noble thing serving and so I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did so here we are seeing that in the lineage of Saul in that him as, as his ancestors were doing was serving the Lord and also among the Israelites they, they had the Levites the Levites were set apart to all of all uh, ministering to the Lord and uh, ministering to the Lord and being the and being and being the me, 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 and being the mediators are between the Israelite and God. I thank God whom I serve as my ancestor did with a clear conscience as night and day. I constantly remember you in prayer. I thank God. I thank God for you, the God I serve with a clear conscience just as my ancestors did. Clear conscience, clear conscience, clear conscience. It's very important for each and every one of us to be found living a life of serving the Lord with a clear conscience. And let me point out an option of scripture. If your conscience does not condemn you, neither does God condemn you. I bet it's in one of the first, first or second letters of John or Peter. Uh, let's look into it. In the book of 1 John chapter 3 verse 21, uh, Beloved, 1 John chapter 3 verse 21, and it says, Beloved. Greatest love that anyone could ever know. It overcame the cross and grave to find my soul. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's quite exciting. So, uh, in the book of 1 John chapter 3, verse 21, it says, Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God. If our hearts do not condemn us, dear friends, if we do not feel guilty, we can come to God with bold confidence. If our heart does not condemn us, if our heart does not condemn us, we can come before uh, before God in confidence. Uh, in another translation, say that, dear friends, if our conscience does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And it continues saying that, and we will, uh, verse 20, it begins off by saying, even if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts and he knows all things. Even if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts and he knows all things. Now we can never hide away from God when you are fallen, when you are you have backslidden in that always come back to God that, that we get from the story of the prodigal son. The beautiful thing about the story of the prodigal son is that when he scanned all the money that he had, uh, he still had money, he still had what it took to go back to the father. Also to each and every one of us, we have what it takes to go back to our father. And the other beautiful thing about the story of the prodigal son is that he never, we don't see him going asking, uh, asking up and about where, has, where does my father now live? Uh, where did he, did he move to? And that we don't see him doing anything like that because the father was where he left him although to each and every one of us where you left god that's where god is still waiting for you so get back to him and he's gonna run to you embrace you kiss you uh, give unto you a new garment and ensure that uh, you feel love and you you remember that uh, what you miss was not the relationship but was the fellowship and so that's usually the thing once you get to see just as a lord and savior you you find, you get to have the you have a relationship with god and it can never be taken away by anything or anyone the only thing that you ought to be found working on and working at is your fellowship with him in the book of philippians said that work out your salvation with fear and trembling work it out for noah he was working on his salvation for each and one of us as believers as christian we work out our salvation we work out our salvation because it's already inside of us and we will receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandment and do what is pleasing in his sight 
and so i've talked about the conscious our god is greater than our heart god is greater than our conscious and so let us only find coming before him in the book of uh, romans he said that uh, let us then come be, uh, let us let us approach the throne of grace full of confidence let us approach the throne of grace full of confidence so that we may find grace and obtain mercy that is going to be found helping us in time of need now you see there's usually a time that it's easy for us to go to the uh, before god before the throne of grace and you see that uh, that grace that we find and that mercy that you obtain is a mercy it's a grace to help us in time of need there's going to be a time that we're going to be in need and is that grace that you shall have, have and is that grace that you shall have found and is that mercy that you shall of, of, have obtained that is going to be found helping you out in your time of need let us pray almighty oh, never father in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ and grace to the father for this one of day as you're given to each and every one of us, dearly Father, we found hearing your word, O oh God. And as I'm going to find sharing your word, O oh God, let your let your let their hearts be open, O oh God, to receive your word, O oh God. And dearly Father, I do believe in the power of your word, O oh God. Let there be a transformation in our minds, O oh God. And let there be, dearly Father, a repentance, O oh God, of our ways, O oh God. And let be found, dearly God, turning and running towards your God. And this is a prayer of faith that I pray in the mighty name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And so today, uh, I bet I'm going to do <laughs> uh, a bet in that at times when i'm sharing later on i come to realize i could not have titled it that way i could have titled it another way uh but let's stick to the script uh, i'm gonna be found sharing about little by little uh this is that that part and uh, so it's my prayer my heart is that, that you've watched part one and part two this the third one and it's gonna be deeper we are going deeper 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 and so when the children of israelite were in the wilderness in that god provided for them manna god provided for them quails and it's, it was for them to take as they deserved in that you know the lord he said that and to those of whom gathered much in that it spoiled but to those of whom gathered little they were satisfied you know at times we surely think that is usually in the having a lot of things that you get to be satisfied in that um and so you're gonna be talking about satisfied little by little being satisfied and so yes being satisfied is gonna be awesome uh i've checked the scriptures <laughs> uh, we're gonna have a wonderful time and so in the other lord we're gonna start off uh uh foolish man the lord requires of his soul tonight uh there's a, a, a man who had a, a large harvest and then he was considering having where uh, more houses so as to store all his treasure and then josh guys uh says that a foolish one what if the lord requires of, of his soul tonight in that what will happen of his riches what will happen of all his treasure and so for living a life of being satisfied and a forest and said that i have learned what it is to have plenty and to be at base i have learned what it is to have much and to have little and in all things in that he have i got to realize about uh, being satisfied uh, those, i'm gonna be found checking out into uh, we're gonna be found looking into the portion of scriptures and we are gonna be blessed little by little being satisfied and so turn with me to the book of uh it's taking time for it to load uh if i was using uh, if i was using my phone it could have been very fast very fast you are wonderful you are worthy oh lord you are wonderful you are worthy oh lord because you are wonderful you are worthy oh lord you are wonderful you are worthy oh lord in the book of uh, luke 12, 12 verse 13 it starts off by saying the parable of of the rich fool some someone in the crowd said teacher tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me uh, let's jump, jump all to verse 19 that's our option uh, verse 18 and he said i i will do this i will tear down my bands uh, seems we're gonna start off from verse 16 and he told them a parable and so these are and so a lot of savages guys is speaking so let us listen to what he is saying let me lift up my bible so that you can see it and so he said that Jesus Christ saying the land of a rich man produced plentifully 
and he thought to himself what shall i do for i have nowhere to store my crops what shall i do for i have nowhere to store my crops and he said i will do this i will tear down my barns and build larger ones and there i will store all my grain and my goods and i will say to my soul soul you have ample good lay up for many years relax eat drink be merry but god said to him fool this night your soul is required of you and this thing that you are prepared whose will it be whose will it be everything that you are prepared whose will it be so is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. And so you're seeing here, there's a way we can live a life of being rich towards God. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all other things are going to be added to you. In the, in, the, in the story of the rich young ruler, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ told him, go and sell everything that you have and give it to the poor and then come and follow me. The poor man went away uh, being disappointed. You see, Jesus Christ wanted him to be found having treasures in heaven. You see, uh, a person can be found living a life here on earth, you're wealthy, you're filthy, rich, you're having it all. And then when you reach in heaven, you find that you are bankrupt. You don't have any gold, you don't have any silver, uh, because you never lived a life of storing a treasure in heaven. And so to each and every one of us, how will we be able to live a life of being satisfied by the literature that you are, are going to be found having? Because this man, he, he wanted to just live a life relaxing, not helping anyone, but saying to his soul, relax. <laughs> uh, this guy is pretty funny. For many years, relax. Eat, drink. Uh, be merry in that that was the kind of life that he wanted to live you not know, caring about anyone who was suffering out there he didn't want to care you know the lord whenever we read, read about uh, in the in the book of acts when god said that in the book of acts when Jesus Christ tell the disciples they're gonna be my they're gonna be my witnesses in jerusalem judea samaria and all the ends of the world in that in the when the israelites were harvesting their harvest and uh, when the israelites were harvesting their harvest in that those those a, a, a portion of their harvest that they're not uh, they're not they're not alluding they're not uh, harvesting everything in their field they are leaving some behind for the poor they are leaving some behind for the poor and so turn with me to the uh, to the book of they gathered little and were satisfied i'm not telling us to be found living a life or settling for less uh, but I, I hope and pray at the end of this broadcast that uh, each and every one of us is going to be found having an understanding of what the Lord expects and requires of us. Those who gathered plenty, spoiled, and, and uh, living a life of controlling our greed, living a life of controlling our greed. Uh, let's check it out in the book of uh, the special scripture that I was telling you about, Paul learning of how it is to have plenty in the book of Philippians. Uh, in the lesson today, devotion, we are doing the book of Philippians, and today we're in chapter 3. Hopefully, I'm going to be found sharing chapter 3 and 4 so we can <laughs> go on to another epistle. In the book of uh, Philippians, chapter 4, verse 12. Philippians 4, verse 10. Let's, uh, let's start off from verse 10, and it talks about God's provision. I, I rejoice in the Lord greatly that I read. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have received your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity in that uh, uh, the people in the in Philistine in that they were concerned about Paul but they didn't have the opportunity of reaching out to him with whatever they were having. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am I am I am to be content. Each and every one of us, let us be found living a life of being content. Let us learn what it is to be content. Paul learned. It's a, it's a lesson. It's a lesson that each and every one of us have got to learn. And make sure that you don't repeat the class of learning this lesson of being content. I know how to be brought, I know how to be brought low and how to be uh, to abound. In, in any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger. What's the secret to each and every one of us of, of facing plenty, of facing hunger? Uh, I have learned the secret of facing plenty, plenty and hunger, abundance and need, and I can do. I have learned the secret. Each and every one of them, let us always know that I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And so it's a, it's a charge to each and every one of us. Uh, let's look it from... I have learned what it is to have plenty and to be a base, to, have, to abound and to be brought low. Uh, Paul learned the secrets and the secret is I can do all things through the Christ who strengthens me. 
in the letters uh, a lord and savior just christ told the disciples this is a portion of scripture that i've kept on repeating and repeating when you went when i sent you did you lack anything they said no so to each and every one of us as we live a life of believing in god and, and counting on him in that we ain't going to be found lacking anything living in plenty and being in want we're going to be found having everything that we need uh, pertaining to life and godliness and so let's check it out uh, in the book of first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 17 I'm not sure what she talks about but let's look at it first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 17 and it says first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 17 and it says then we who are alive who are left will be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so we always and so we will always be with the Lord therefore encourage one another with these words the coming of the Lord trumpet will blow caught in the air uh, beautiful beautiful and so uh, uh, that was uh, let's not go to that line and so they had they gathered plenty the Israelites they didn't know how to count on God they gathered plenty and it spoiled the Israelite that's gonna be our verse of emphasis and I'm gonna uh, when Jesus Christ in the in the disciples prayer the prayer that our Lord received Jesus Christ so the disciple and that he said that our father watch in heaven hallowed be thy name the kingdom come that will be done on earth as they in the heaven give us this day our daily bread and so God wants us to be found living a life of always counting on him of always depending on him of never saying that I have it all now I can go I have it all now I can go and and I can I can stop praying in that God wants us to always be found appearing before him talking with him communing with him and that that's what God wants for each and every one of us those who gathered little were satisfied I don't know why I'm having a tough time getting up to the scripture uh, but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it's there uh, in the book of all I need is you all I need is you all I need is you Lord is you Lord all I need is you this is my daily bread your very word spoken to me and I I'm tensing a little bit and uh, let's let me check out if I've saved I've saved this option of scripture uh, in the book of Exodus uh, <laughs> we are gonna get to, I know of the verse in the book of Exodus I'm trying to look for another one that I've I'd seen another that I saw and so that we can go to the Exodus one yeah in the book of 2nd Corinthians chapter 8 verse 15 I saved those notes 2nd Corinthians chapter 8 verse 15 but I wasn't sure whether it was there second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 15 so are you ready for it and it says second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 15 and it says uh, let's start off from verse 13 for I do not mean that others should should be east for I do not mean that others should be east and you burden but that as a matter of fairness your abundance at the at the present time should supply their need so that their abundance may supply your need that they may be that there may be fairness and so here we are talking how we are seeing about there being fa fairness in the in the sense that he who was plenty let him be found giving to the one and uh, he who is uh, in abundance let me fa be found uh, helping those of whom are in need verse 15 which is my verse of emphasis and it is written whoever gathered much had nothing left whoever gathered much had nothing left and whoever gathered little had no luck whoever gathered much had nothing left and whoever gathered little had luck and so little by little each and every one of us are living a life of knowing how can i be satisfied how can i be satisfied without which the lord has given unto me and that is for each and every one of us we found living a life of not being greedy in that don't live beyond your limits uh, don't fake who you are live uh, in the level that God has kept you and when you are in faithful in that level uh, in, when you are and when you are faithful in that level that you are in 
uh, God is going to be found uh, giving and entrusting to you more and more things. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 15, as we have read, it says that, and it is written, whoever gathered much had nothing left over. Whoever gathered much had nothing left over. In the other Lord, he said that people were busy, uh, people were busy living a posh life, building houses for themselves, whereas the house of the Lord was in ruins. Each and every one of us, we have a responsibility, we have a mandate of taking care of God's house. Uh, in the book of 2 Corinthians 8, 15, in another translation, New Living Translation, it says, as the teacher said, those who gathered a lot had nothing left over, and those who gathered only a little had enough. Uh, do, you, do you trust God enough? In the book of Exodus chapter 16, verse 18, he said that, And when they, had, when, when they measured it by the omer, he who gathered much had no excess, and he who gathered little had, had no shortfall. Each one gathered as much as he needed. Each one gathered as much as he needed. In the book of Exodus, chapter 16, verse 18, uh, it's going to be a portion of scripture. I'm going to be found ending with it. And uh, so let's deviate a bit in, in each and every one of us having a mandate of taking care of the, of the house of God because we are part of the body. We are part of the body. And so there ought not to be gaps. There ought not to be gaps in the, in the body. Uh, there's something that I'm trying to remember. Uh, in line to it, anyway, uh, building houses for yourself. And the house of God is in ruins. And then he's saying that your pockets are going to be found having holes. <laughs> uh, in the book of Haggai chapter 1 verse 4. And then we go to Exodus 16, 18. And then it's uh, close will be done. In the book of Haggai chapter 1 verse 4. Uh, let me read it with, uh, with this gadget. And it says, it is written... Uh, is it a time for you? Is it a time? And so the sons of Issachar understood of the time that you are living in. So for each and to each and every one of us, having the wisdom which is from above, I bet by now you know that there's two types of wisdom. A, a worldly kind of wisdom, a worldly kind of wisdom, it strife, it envies, and a godly kind of wisdom. Uh, above, from above, it's peaceable. In the book of Haggai chapter 1 verse 4, that is in the book of James, about the two types of wisdom. In the book of Haggai chapter 1 verse 4, it says, is it time for you for, for you yourself to be living in the in your panel houses while the house while the this house remains in ruins now this is what the lord of hosts says consider carefully your ways each and every one of us let us consider carefully our ways and let us choose to be found happy yahweh be our way yahweh your way is my way verse 5 you say that now this is what the lord of hosts say carefully consider your ways each and every one of us let us carefully consider our way you have planted much but harvested little and so we are seeing here the bad part about living a life of being self-centered or making it all about you you have planted much but harvested little you eat but never have enough you drink and never have your fill you put on clothes but never get warm you earn wages to put in your into a bag pierced through this is what the lord of hosts say consider carefully your ways to each and every one of us let us consider carefully our ways i should like the other portion of scripture in that the other verses it say that go up the hills bring down 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 lumber and build the house other times he talks about bring wood and build the house so that i may take pleasure in it and be glorified says the lord you expect much but behold it is amounted to little to each and every one of us in that god expects us before living a life of offering ourselves as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto thee for that a spiritual act of worship that's a beautiful thing about god telling us go to the hill and come with the wood come with the wood in the book of exodus chapter 16 verse 18 we read a portion of scripture about the children of israel and the bread that was coming from heaven and it says uh, let me start off from verse 13 uh, in the evening quail came up and covered the camp in the morning dew lay around the camp and when the dew had gone up there was no there was no there was on the face of of the wilderness a fine flake like fine flake like thing fine as frost on the ground when the poor visual saw it they said to one another what is this that's a beautiful thing about manna in that the manna is what is this in that whatever they whatever they were craving for whatever they were desiring that's what they, they ate that's what they ate god is awesome in that i pray in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ whatever your heart is that is whatever you're craving for in the may the lord satisfy you fully in the mighty name of the lord jesus what is this for they do not know what it was and moses said to them it is the bread that the lord has given you to eat this is the this is what the lord has commanded gather of gather of it each of you as much as he can eat little as much as he can eat you shall eat take it take an omer 
around to the number of the people that each of you has in his tent. And the people of Israel did so. They gathered some more, some little. And so here he is saying that the children of Israel who had agreed, other people were humble enough. And that's the, uh, the uh, what's your heart posture? What's your heart posture? You see, when you are having greed in that, uh, pride, pride comes before a fall, in that being proud, having greed, in that it will lead to your fall. Verse 18, but when they measured it with an armor, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no luck. Each of them gathered as much as he could eat. And Moses said to them, Let no one leave any of it over till morning. But they did not listen to Moses. Each and every one of us, little by little, God is testing our obedience. When we are going to be found being faithful with the little, God is going to be found giving unto us more. more. And so these people were, did not listen to Moses. Some left part of it till morning, and eat bread warms and stank. Ew bad smell and Moses was angry with them morning by morning they gathered it each as much as he could eat but when the sun grew hot it melted on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread you can go and read the remaining portion of scripture so it's my prayer my heart is that reach any one of us little by little living a life of knowing that of being satisfied by God in that God rest said that never will I ever leave you never will I forsake you I'm gonna be with you never leave you or apart from the one which is in the book of Matthew uh, there's a one in one of the epistles and it says yeah in the book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 another verse we are finishing with <laughs> in the book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 it says that keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said never will I ever leave you never will I ever forsake you and so that's it for today's slice may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you may the lord grant to you peace shalom shalom till next time be blessed